Welcome to Get Offset. My name is Emily, and today I'm going to talk about Phoebe Bridgers smashing her guitar. Because apparently some people are pretty, pretty upset about it. And I've seen a few takes that are really funny, and I would like to dig into them a little bit more. Please uh, like, comment, subscribe. I mostly just talk about guitars. And uh, today I guess I'm talking about a, a guitar. So destroying instruments on stage is a long and storied history in rock and roll music. Um, it can probably be traced back specifically, but I don't really know the specifics of it. Uh, the earliest instance of destroying an instrument on stage that I can think of is um, probable wife murderer Jerry Lee Lewis uh, burning his piano, lighting his piano on fire on stage after a show. And if you're curious about my uh, accusation that Jerry Lee Lewis probably murdered his wife, it's pretty suspicious. There's um, an episode of Disgraceland about it. I believe it was his fourth wife died under pretty suspicious circumstances. So did his third wife. And also he did marry his underage cousin. So um, that's just, just a lot of, to unpack there. And it's really easy to um, digress. So let's get back to it. So you have uh, Jerry Lee Lewis lighting his piano on fire. You have Jimi Hendrix lighting his guitar on fire. You have the Who smashing guitars. You have this guitar as seconds to live. You have the cover of um, a Clash record with a, a an instrument getting smashed. Like it's a big thing. You have uh, bands like Nirvana pretty famously destroying guitars. Chris uh, Novoselic throwing his bass in the air in the MTV some MTV award show. I think it wasn't having it come back and smack him in the face. Like these antics are are they're not new and. Um, it's kind of interesting to see people get so mad about it when I'm pretty sure Sturgill Simpson destroyed his guitar on Saturday Night Live. At the very least, the week beforehand, uh, Machine Gun Kelly threw his guitar on stage. Maybe to attack? Probably. Who knows? I don't. I won't make assumptions about it, but I will say that no one really seemed to get mad about that. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> so let me just talk about some of the takes that I've actually seen people say um, in some guitar forums. Are you ready? One, she should have given it to a kid. I don't know if people are serious when they say this. Um, at this point, it's just become such a memeable thing to say. Uh, a while back, 60, 60 Cycle Hum... Um, Ryan Burke from 60 Cycle Hum said that he had this, um, Epiphone guitar that he didn't really like, and he had had an inquiry from a gig bag manufacturer, and they wanted him to test the durability of their cases. And he said, hey, I'm going to test it with this guitar I don't like. And, um, hey, it might be destroyed. It might not. People went nuts at the thought of this $100 guitar that Ryan had put a lot of his time and energy into getting destroyed for any reason. So uh, people kept saying, give it to a kid, give it to a kid, give it to charity. Da, 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 da. And uh, I said, if you destroy that guitar, I will donate, I think it was $100 to Rain City Rock Camp in your name. And Ryan messaged me, he's like, start a GoFundMe. So I started a GoFundMe and then every time he did um, another test in the series of videos he did for this guitar case or gig bag. Um, he said, if you're, if you're mad that I might destroy a guitar, put your money where your mouth is. We ended up raising uh, about a thousand dollars. I think it was over a thousand dollars for Rain City Rock Camp for girls. And he threw the guitar off a bridge. <laughs> so he was like, I have to destroy it now. And yeah, people got upset about that. It was a, it was a stunt. And that's fine. <laughs> But, like, the idea of, like, telling somebody what they can and cannot do with their own um, unliving property is really silly. And it's a weird assumption to make that Phoebe Bridgers doesn't give back in any sort of way to any sort of community. She's probably inspired a lot of people to pick up guitar and start writing songs. And I think that's a lot more valuable than taking, you know, a, a mid-level Dan Electro baritone guitar and giving just giving it away. I think the inspiration is probably more valuable of a thing that she could do than just give away an instrument for some reason. That is her instrument. And maybe she does give away instruments. You don't know what she does and neither do I. Um, whatever. 
so that's just one one of the critiques that I've seen people um, have. So if you if you have guitars and you want to give them to kids, give them to kids, and don't tell other people what to do with their own property. It's not like they're burning down a house in front of a bunch of people who could use a house. It's just a guitar. It's just a guitar. All right. The the next uh, thing I saw was that just smashing a guitar should be in the moment. It should be authentic. It should just be like all this pent-up masculine rage, and then you just smash guitar, smash. Because <laughs> I can't take that one seriously. I just can't. And because it's stupid. It's stupid because most of the time a guitar is getting smashed, someone decided to do that ahead of time. Like, if I, I've never smashed a guitar, but if I did, I would, I would think about it first because I probably wouldn't be playing the whole show with my favorite guitar just to smash it at the end. You, you plan this stuff in, in advance and yeah, you can say that's not authentic, but it is entertainment and it is entertaining and musicians are entertainers. So like, I, I, it's also stupid because not like these people who are most famous for smashing their instruments on stage they planned it in advance you think Jimi Hendrix just had a, a a canister of of lighter fluid just kept it next to his 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 amp or something kept it tucked away under his pedal board or in his guitar case no he knew he was going to light the guitar on fire at the end of the show and so what it was entertaining <laughs> the who had their texts like dummy up their guitars a little bit to make them easier to smash or Pete Townsend would like glue the neck, neck of a guitar on just so it would come apart easier so it'd be more impressive uh Nirvana Chris from Nirvana said that he would uh loosen the bolts on the neck of his bass and he would essentially just snap the the the, the neck away from from the body to make it look like he smashed his bass without actually ruining his bass and typically he could just put it all back together at the end and he got really mad at himself once when he actually broke the neck of the bass because it was, it was those are expensive and then when Nirvana got big um Fender would send them factory seconds and then they would use them for the last song and smash their guitars they planned it and that's fine it's entertaining. And yeah, Phoebe did um, tell Dan Electro that she was going to smash the guitar. They said, good luck. Those are hard to break. And apparently they are. So A plus for that build quality there, Dano. Um, and then she did the right thing in telling SNL that she wanted to, to do it. So they gave her um, a dummy monitor. So she wasn't actually damaging anybody else's property but her own. Again, I don't know why you care. And the and I liked the entertainment of it um being planned out. Not because like and I thought it was off the cuff enough. I like I didn't expect her to do it. I knew she was gonna scream because it's on the record. But I didn't know she was gonna smash the guitar and I thought that was pretty funny. Um that for reasons I'll get into. But uh, I liked that they 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 rigged up some pyrotechnics on the monitor wedge so that when she hit it, it sparked. That was pretty fun. That was fun to watch. That's just my opinion on it. Um, and then the most ridiculous of uh, the comments I saw was that it, it kind of blends into the authenticity argument um, a little bit. Someone made the claim that it looked like she didn't want to do it, that someone had told her to do it. And I just got to wonder why that person would assume that a woman doesn't have any agency over what the hell she does on stage. And that's really all I have to say about that one, because I feel like that one's pretty stupid. Even if it was someone else's idea, it's her career. I think it's pretty obvious that she has a lot of agency in in what she does, because she does a lot of things that I think that traditionally <laughs> corralers wouldn't be super duper into, but... But she does it anyway. Like playing a BC Rich guitar. Even her early shirts were when she was especially folky were like had that metal font on them. And that's kind of why one of the things I want to say is that I think people miss is just how funny and absurd it is that of all people who are like smashing guitars on SNL, it's a, a person who's most famous for writing supremely sad folk songs. And she's up there 
with a BC Rich warlock or whatever for one song. And then she's doing the rock and roll thing of smashing a guitar on the next song. I don't, <laughs> I don't think how, I, I don't get how you don't see a little bit of humor in that. At least a little bit of humor. Uh, and get, that's, that's hilarious. Like, it was hilarious when she just started screaming into the microphone also because nobody who is unaware of that song, um, I know the end, uh, would probably expect her to just start screaming. My husband was really surprised. I don't think he'd listen to that, um, that song. And, uh, I know my podcast co-host was surprised, which we'll talk more about tomorrow. But while, while like this is new and while I'm like, experiencing just this weird this weird reaction to it like you don't have to like that people smash guitars and for the record i don't really think she smashed that guitar like she didn't i don't think she destroyed that guitar i bet she can just tune it back up and play it again like it looked like it it looked like it kind of won that battle between the fake monitor wedge um and there's one other thing that people are saying that it um is lame that she didn't actually break the guitar is kind of the other end of it. Like she took a lot of thwacks at that thing. And what I want to say is, uh, I think she, I do think she probably should have held it from, if she wanted to break it, held it from closer to the headstock. That would have gotten her a uh, more velocity, more momentum, I think. And then also that she was banging it. She's like shorter than me. I'm five, seven. Um, and then she was uh, hitting it on a wedge that came up about a foot off the floor. So she really had, like, a lot less distance from up here to ground to make a good, like, solid connection with that, with that, with the floor that would um, create more momentum and break the instrument more easily. Also, she apparently didn't dummy up her guitar like Nirvana and the Who did. Hey, <laughs> I mean... She planned some aspects of it. She didn't seem to have uh, thought about that one as much. But that's, again, fine. It was her performance. I thought it was good. I thought it was really fun to watch. I enjoyed it. And uh, isn't that what entertainment is is about and being a musician? Entertaining people and shooting your shot. I mean, being on SNL, other than like performing at the Super Bowl... Probably one of the most difficult gigs in the world to get. And um, I'm, you know, very happy for her. She's been having a great, great 12 months or whatever. Uh, nominated for a bunch of Grammys. Performing on SNL on late night TV. Uh, it's just so different than, like, three years ago playing 150 cap venues. So people are going to get mad about really anything that somebody does. And if, and I think that, uh, the argument cannot really be made that, um, she needed the style or the, um, joke of smashing a guitar over, over the substance of her art. Again, nominated for a bunch of Grammys, really, really critically acclaimed stuff. I think a phenomenal songwriter, a really, really talented singer, and I really think that she's doing whatever she wants with her career. I think she's writing it and having fun while she's doing it. And um, I think that I think that's admirable. And, you know, I don't like to spend whatever, like, opinion equity or value I have complaining about stuff I don't like. I do it sometimes, yeah, sure. But if I didn't like an SNL performance, I'm probably going to look at my husband and be like, eh. And if I really like it, I'm going to say nice things about it. I just don't see the point in, um, I don't know, crapping on something just because it's not for me. Um, not my style of music. Machine Guns Kelly is not my style, particularly. And I don't really know much about him. I don't find him particularly offensive from what I do know about him. I loved it when he co-hosted a catfish. Again, I'm not talking about Machine Gun Kelly. Um, yeah, but that that's the video. Those are uh, the critiques that I saw. Um, let me know your opinions in the comments. Tell me how dumb and wrong I am, probably. I know you want to do it. <laughs> I don't I don't really care. 
Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for understanding. Um, like, comment, subscribe below if you feel like it. Um, if you do buy things from places like Reverb.com or Sweetwater um, or want to put your music online via DistroKid, please check out the uh, affiliate links in the video description. It helps us tremendously in keeping up this channel, and we really appreciate um, just y'all in general. Well, have a great rest of your night. Uh, if you're watching this on Monday the 8th, Check out the uh, podcast as it drops tomorrow. We, Andrew, Renard, and I talk about this a little bit more along with a, a bunch of other fun things. We have a podcast we release every week. Bye. I mean it this time. <laughs>